Thank you, Bob. Good evening, everybody, from Trondheim. We're not far from the Arctic Circle here in northern Norway, but it really isn't a bad evening. The conditions very good indeed for this vital Champions League game. Let's just check on the sides. Rosenberg, so close now to a League and Cup double in Norway, they feel their strongest side. Their goalkeeper, Riza, returns after injury and a loss of form. But more important, their attack is now led by Harold Brackback. Now, he scored 22 goals in 21 league games this season. He missed the opening game in this group in Warsaw with a stomach illness. Seven Norwegian internationals in this side that have a very impressive home record indeed. Well, as you heard, the Blackburn Rovers manager, Ray Half, has decided against playing Chris Sutton in the sweeper role. Uh, in fact, for an away tie, it is quite an offensive setup. Three up front there, Sutton, Alan Shearer and Mike Newell. But Graham Lasso's injured ankle keeps him out of defence. Jeff Kenner comes in and there's a place on the left of the midfield for young Lee McKell. A referee tonight comes from Austria. It's Gunter Benko, who's a 40-year-old male nurse. Incidentally, this is also his first game in the Champions League. Certainly can't overstate the importance of this game to both clubs. As you've heard, they've both lost their opening Champions League games in this group. Another defeat tonight, and their hopes of qualifying for the quarterfinals will, I suppose, would just about take their place in the dustbin. Blackburn in a change strip. Here are the substitutes. Good to see Paul Warhurst amongst the uh, Blackburn subs. Two broken legs in the last 12 months and such a valuable member of the squad there. Dying really to get him back in uh, full trim. Blackburn in a change strip then. Red and black. Attack the goal to our right. Rusenberg on the point of becoming champions of Norway for the fourth successive year. Henry gets it forward. Sutton. A touch there by Sherwood. Again, Blackburn passing the ball nicely around here. Getting a good deal of possession. Here's Batty. Sherwood hitting it long towards Mike Hill. Batty getting in there again. And away come Rusenberg with Kvama the right back. Hendry. The first touch there for Tim Flowers. Knocking it away in touch. Blackburn, of course, loses to uh, Moscow Spartak. Rusenberg loses away to Legia Warsaw. Kavada. Good challenging here again by Batty, but you expect that in any case from that competitive little midfield player. And the five is Stensos. Stomped though by Henningberg, himself a Norwegian, he played for Lidlström before joining uh, Blackburn Rovers. Solvets. No foul there by Pierce. Patty bringing the ball forward to Shearer. Newell's got on ahead of him. Sherwood losing out to Jakobsen. And then running into Hendry. Little flick forward again. Kenner getting it forward. out there. Stem source. Henry with the clearance again. Early thoughts in St. John. Well, looking at uh, the first few minutes, it's going to be a very open game, that's for sure, because uh, both sides have got attacking players, have been attacking pattern, and I think we're going to see end to end stuff, so I think we should be in for a good one here tonight, Brian. A corner then for Rusenberg. The big defender, the number four, is up, will be an obvious target for this one, but it was just too high for him. Strand. Blackburn have pulled everybody back behind this ball. The last thing they want is to concede something early on. 
Their form having been turned around so well in the last two games, away to Swindon, then at home to Coventry. And here they come again with uh, Batty. Playing it for Shearer, wide on this right-hand side. Sutton's gone through the middle. It's back here with Bird. Yes. Very modest ground here in Trondheim. The capacity at the best of times is something like 24,000, being cut for security reasons by UEFA to just 12,000. Grassy banks behind one goal and no terracing or anything behind another. And open terracing on the far side as we look here as Shearer now goes down that flank. And Blackburn got a corner. Shearer's movement, Brian, as you know, is terrific. I mean, he moves left and right. And the thing about this uh, attacking formation tonight, when it comes out wide, you can be sure there's going to be at least a couple of uh, Blackburn players in the box when the ball comes in. Well, it's Sherwood with this corner. Sutton there, Pierce at the near post. Number 11 there is Mackell. Came from Newcastle United. The corner flag had lost its flag. So Sherwood waits. Trembling hands and the official can't get it right. Shearer waits also. Lines and happy. Sherwood's corner. Shearer waiting. And the ball eventually cleared by Rusenberg. Bird. The ball just out of play. Yes, the linesman's flag was up, and it's uh, a throw to Rusenberg. Pierce had an excellent game in the first match against Sparta. Onside, here's Jakobsen. Henry was just playing them on. Brackback's waiting in the middle. They might try and work it out again to Jakobsen. That's just what they've done. They owe so much to him down this left flank. Throw to Rosenberg. You're right about uh, the little winger Jakobsen, and uh, Henning Bert can't really afford to, to leave this fellow and give him space. Some 58 caps for his country. And certainly uh, Jakobsen will be one of the players facing Terry Venable's side when they come to Norway in a couple of weeks' time. Played in the 94 World Cup. Five foot four, but a real handful on his knife. Tim Flowers then with the uh, free kick for Blackburn Rovers. Up goes Newell. Here's Shearer. Batty. Gets it back again towards Berg. Matty keeping possession again, had his European experience, of course, with Leeds United before he joined Blackburn. It's not a bad cross, but knocked away quite comfortably again by the uh, Rusenberg defence. Right back. Salt Phipps. Oh, poor ball. Straight to Newell, who'd come back uh, to help. Matty again. Sutton with a header. Here's Sherwood. Now Mikel. Whether Shearer can keep it in play, he has. So important as we know to Blackburn Rovers. In fact, uh, Ray Harper was telling Saint and I at uh, lunchtime today that this man really is the flagship for the whole club on the field at the moment goals in his last two games if Shearer's playing well everything seems to gel around him Lee McKell finding Henningberg nobody there to take Shearer's pass it's a goal kick I think the one thing that Blackburn Rovers have to be careful about is that when Rosenberg get the ball on the counter attack in the last attack there 
Henry and his co-defenders all just dropped off there. And if they allow them to pick the ball up in the centre circle, turn and get at them, I think there could be problems for them. One in the air that time by uh, Scammell's route. Captain of Kusenberg. Uh, Batty playing it short to Mike Newell. Berg with a header. Berg did well there, quickly closing in on uh, Jakobsen. Stensors, number five. Getting around Lee McKell. Finding Scammell's roots. Henry quickly into the challenge there. Time it was Kenner. They had her out of play. Another throw to Rusenberg. So here come Rusenberg again. Another throw to them. So many years I called them Rosenberg. It's told here, no, it's definitely Rusenberg. You wouldn't like us if we called it Liverpool, they said, or Tottenham. So it's a fair point try and keep my discipline going and make sure it's Rusenberg all night. Nil nil here in this so important Champions League game. Berg hitting it straight with the opponent and a throw now for Blackburn Rovers. Of course it was a major disappointment for Blackburn to lose that opening game against Spartak Moscow. But remember two from each group of four go into the quarterfinals. If Blackburn can do their work properly here tonight and win, that's Rusenberg with two defeats in two games, that would mean, and that virtually would end their hopes. And then it becomes two out of three to qualify for the quarterfinals, and Blackburn then can pay their attention towards Leisure Warsaw. At the moment, they've got some defending to do here, and Kenner just got ahead onto that one, which was very valuable indeed. Held it up just for a moment. Now can they play this cross now? Scammelswood. And well wide of the goal for the goalkeeper. They are very tidy on the counter-attack line, aren't they? And uh, they are finding this space just in front of uh, the black one back four. And I think the midfield players, you know, Batty and Sherwood, Young and Mikel, they've got to be very careful that they don't let people come between them and the back four. Ray Harford there, and Blackburn Rovers coach. Certainly been a bold move of his playing three up, really going for it. This is Ian Pierce. Up down towards Shearer. Can we get a boy? It's Batty. Right past Sherwood, but now Sherwood gets possession, plays it in again for Shearer. Knocking it wide again. Newell on the far side. Big dink in there. Sutton tried to get on the end of that one. Newell was in there too. And in the end it comes to Sherwood. And Pierce with a chance to turn away from trouble and plays it to Berg. He had to be quick as well. Stensos. Rusenberg coach, Niels Arne Egan. Batty, getting through a lot of work in the midfield areas. Mikel. Newell on the far side. I have to say, say, uh, say, Saint, that we really do have to concentrate when it's on that far side. These Blackburn numbers are totally unreadable. Someone's obviously spending all night making sure that nobody can read those black numbers on the back of their dark red shirts. Actually, on television, the lights look good, but uh, yeah. here in the stadium, uh, they don't look up to the quality that we have at home. Pierce has gone up towards the near post again. 
Shearer's right on the goal line. Hendry is up, an obvious target. Sutton is in there as well. But uh, they got that away without any great trouble. Often it was with the clearance for Rusenberg. Here come Blackburn again, but straight through to keeper Reza. Stensos. Hoftum. Stensos again. Little Jakobsen in there, Hendry's header. And Batty battling through that midfield. In the end, it's a free kick to Blackburn Rovers. Foul by Jakobsen. Here's Henningberg. Newell. up towards Sutton, towards rather uh, Shearer. Every ball that uh, Blackburn have played up line to the front players is finding the front players. You know, the fact that they've got three targets up there, every ball from the back has been pinpointed and they're finding them and, and I think this is good play and it's given the boys a bit of an option here and uh, Shearer with his turn and shot which is terrific. I didn't quite get a hold of that one but uh, it's nice to see that uh, Blackburn are going to get the ball in dangerous positions. Hendry getting across there to quell that little bit of danger. Hasn't finished yet either, but the throw goes to the Norwegian champions. Some good play here. And a shot that was only just wide for Stamersrud. Hit with great power on the left foot there. Set up by Kvame, but curling away from Tim Flowers' post, and a goal kick to Blackburn Rovers. It was a good effort, and uh, again, as I say, you, you can't really afford to give them space in front of your back four. They always expect a score to uh, Rosenberg, but at the moment it's Batty and Shearer trying to combine but here they come again the Norwegian champions are some good play again looking to get the ball through once more to Brackback oh. Newell getting a second bite Sherwood missing out Batty see that is sloppy play that you, you can't really afford to give the ball away in positions like that. They are technically very good side, aren't they? The control, the passing, the movement is very good. It's a good play there again, that time by Saltfett. They've lost only two league games this season in Norway. And as Bob was saying before the start of the programme, they've now gone 66 games and they've scored in all of them. I mean, that isn't a incredible record they don't get goalless draws here the golden goal tickets will sell there, <laughs> it? but it does give an idea of their quality and there's nothing to beat the winning habit is there oh yeah it's a terrific record I mean I, I don't think we'd have a team back in the UK that could do that Batty couldn't reach it. Tim Sherwood. Little touch now for Henningberg. Sherwood again. Plenty of movement up front for him. It's Lee McKell. He is again. Playing it once more for David Batty. The bird being forced back though. Pierce is available for... Uh, Berg, here he is, and then Hendry. Patty once again. 
driving the ball straight into the touch. taking it from Berg, gets it back again to Berg. Ball hit long this time, trying to release Sutton, but it's not nearly accurate enough. And away come the Norwegians again, Berg stopping them. Batty battling away, Shearer on this near touchline now. There's Henningberg. Once again. Mikel. Newell. Hendry hitting it long. Shearer rising to it. Beaten in the air though. Mike four for Sherwood. Now for Mike Newell. Back for Tim Sherwood again. Here's David Batty. Looking for a bit of uh, space, a bit of movement. It's Shearer who's pulled away on this side again. But Stensor's holding him up. Getting some support there by Scammelsrud, who's fouled, and it's a free kick. The number five Stensor's did very well, didn't he, against uh, Alan Shearer. In fact, he's done that two or three times. Shearer's tried to go by him on, on the flank, and uh, he's been equal to it. Pierce with a header. Sherwood knocking it on. This is Kwame, the right back. And a Blackburn throw. Forward. David Batty. Sutton's made a break. There's his downward header. Akel trying to get in. Can Sutton take advantage? In fact, there's a foul by Blackburn. A free kick to Rusenberg already taken. Scammels Roots taking possession here. A chance now for Blackburn on the break. Four up for Blackburn, or rather three up for Blackburn. Four back for Rusenberg. And Kwame had the better of Newell. Back back. Stensors. Jakobsen. Deep cross has to be dealt with. No, it's a bit too high. And Blackburn keep it in play. Sutton. Shearer. It's a good break. Led by Batty on the far side. Jakobsen. Salt Vets. And Flowers hammering it away. As yet, not a great deal to stir the blood. Uh, not at the yeah. moment, it's, it's sort of calmed down a little bit. I think Blackburn, funnily enough, have stopped playing the ball up to the front. People who were getting success in the first 15 minutes, and now they're, they're you know, trying to play a more patient game. takes it up. Sutton tries to keep it going. He's got a support from Newell as well. But again, the Norwegians get possession. It's Jakobsen. 
Free kick given to uh, Rosenberg in a dangerous area, four or five yards outside the Blackburn Rovers penalty area. Kid the referee with that one, didn't he, Jakobsen? He just ran straight into Henry. I mean, he had no chance of getting the ball, ran into him, kidded the referee, even got a free kick, and what you say, Brian, is a very dangerous area. Jacobson, number 11, behind it. Scammell's with also. Go, get out of the way! What a goal kick. Came off often, the big defender. Got a good record here actually in Europe as well. They get uh, a European jaunt most seasons to Rusenberg and rarely are they beaten here. In the last few years they've beaten teams like Moscow Dynamo and the Spanish then champions Deportiva La Coruña. And I think in the last decade or so, the only big side that have come here and won have been Sampdoria of Italy. So that's again the measure of the task that faces Blackburn Rovers here tonight. Still at 0-0. Mike Newell, knocking it back now to Henning Berg. Henry. Newell, a little flick on. Sutton chasing, but in vain. It's knocked away there by Bragstadt. Kvama, the right back. Lurken. And technically, they look an excellent side. Oh, yeah, I mean, they are. Far classier, look far quicker, I think, than Blackburn Rovers. You know, there's, any time there's been a, a ball where there's two chasing for it, they've been getting there first. Stensos. Got a valuable header in there. Batty now can bring it away. Bring a bit of pace to it now. Shearer. Losing it a bit for just a moment. Then finds Newell. Knocked on by Sherwood now. Kenner. Newell coming to fetch again. Cal there. Sherwood. Hendry. Quite a few up now for Blackburn. And an offside against Mike Newell. Fine, they had the players up there. They the players up three or four passes ago, and uh, I do think that uh, the Rovers defenders are just passing for the sake of it. I wish somebody would take responsibility and play the ball up front. As you can see here, he just runs straight offside there. That was Newell. But they had, the, they had the red jerseys in there earlier, and I think the ball has got to be played up because when it has been played into them, they've managed to get a hold of it. Hendry. Rosenberg lost 3-1 uh, in uh, Warsaw to Lesia. That's after they've gone into the lead with a, a Jakobsen penalty. Foul on Hoffman as he uh, jumped for that ball. Scammelsworth, the captain, springing it wide here again. Stensos. Playing it wide for Jakobsen. The little cross coming in there. And uh, Henry got a valuable header in there. Just for a moment, though, it looked as though. Uh, Bratback might have just beaten him for the ball. Here's Jakobsen again. There's a great chance here, and a terrific save by Flowers. That was a great chance there for Rosenberg. For Bratback. And uh, it was an excellent piece of goalkeeping. The ball falling in, fighting before him there. What a great piece of keeping there by Tim Flowers. Well done, Tim Flowers. That was superb goalkeeping, wasn't it? I mean, that was a total missed kick by Strand. And there was that back. Oh, good save. 
Now that's a vital moment in the game because they had to go on one down at this stage, you know, you never know what might happen. But uh, they'll have to fight on. Back by Hendry. Flowers, who is responsible, of course, in many quarters for the goal that Spartak caught when he scored in that uh, opening game and he came rushing to the edge of his box and was lobbed. But that really was an excellent piece of goalkeeping. A lot of courage to it and a tremendous reflexes too. I have some more to do because they are looking really dangerous at the moment, Rosenberg. Everybody linking up so well. But Stensors in the end beaten by the challenger, Batty. Gets it up towards Sutton. Turns well for Blackburn Rovers. Tries to get Shearer on his way. But this time the big break stat was there, making the clearance. Here's Braxtad again, just te teasing the ball forward. Good play again, Solvet, who's looked dangerous through that midfield. Jakobsen playing it in early. And back back to there as well. And it's gone in. And the scorer is looking. Well, they've begun to look menacing. And it's paid off for the Norwegian champions. And that's a terrible blow for Blackburn Rovers. Well, they would all have seen here really well. They? When the ball got played on there, you know, Jeff Kenner had come in. There was a lock had come in about close to me. And really, Tim Flowers, having made that great save just earlier there, Brian, you might say then that uh, he could have been at fault. He had not gone across quick enough and getting beaten at the near post there, but not really at a very hard effort. I think it'd be disappointing losing that one. Rosenberg, one, Blackburn Rovers, nil. Just about the half-hour mark. Nil. Batty. Or rather, it's uh, Mackell. And now Pierce. Up forward by Hendry. Up towards Shearer. Up the way by Kvarma. Batty. I mean, why they have to play the ball back to the goalkeeper from positions inside their opponent's half, I'll never know. There's nobody going to take responsibility to play it forward. Sutton on the charge now. Stopped comfortably and fairly by Hofton. Jakobsen. Hustled by Henningberg. Strand was dispossessed, but he gets the ball back again, finds Lurken on that far side. Matt Pack waiting in the middle. Jakobsen's come into a strong mid-attacking position also, but two Blackburn challenges get that one away, but they just can't find anybody when they play it forward. Their game for the moment is disintegrated. It needs somebody to pull it back together again. They need a goal quickly, Brian, to get back on terms here, because if they don't get one, I'll tell you what, it could be two or three down. And they're looking ever more dangerous now. Stensos. Hits it straight at Pierce. Nodded away by Bird. Flicked on by Sherwood. McHale plays it forward, but it's easily cut out. There's nothing there for Shearer. Strand, Scammell's route, Strand again, nice skills on the ball there, looking for Lurken and finds him on the far side, Kenner tries to close him down, comes into Strand again. Well you can see it with your own eyes at home that uh, the Norwegians at the moment are looking the better side. Oh they're a classy outfit, there's no two ways about it Brian. Uh, the, the movement passing is great, but I have to say that I think Blackburn Rovers are standing off, they're not picking people up. The midfielders are letting them get behind them, the, the back players are not stepping forward and, and closing the gaps. Shearer to Newell. 
McCurl to Batty. Oh, back for Henningberg. McCurl again. This will go back again. Batty. I mean, Batty plays more back than he plays forward. And from a position inside the Rusenberg half, suddenly the ball is there, the slip by Henry. The cross comes in. It might come to Jakobsen. Well, is that a comedy of errors, if ever you see that? Huh? Simply because almost a tragedy of errors. Well, midfield players, Brian, have got the ball and won't play it forward. They're looking just to lay it back and lay it back. Taking no responsibility. Well, here's Batty again. Let's see if he can play one forward now. What's he got available? The men forward are completely surrounded by white shirts. They're working very hard, Rusenberg. They're getting people back behind the ball so quickly. Here's Batty again. Shearer on that far side, trying to make something happen for Blackburn Rovers. Trying to get the ball in towards uh, Sutton and uh, Newell. But Blackstad brings it away for Rusenberg. Onside. And waiting in the middle is Blackpack and Jakobsen. And in the end, they get it away. Stensas. Solvet. But Pierce holds him up. And now a break could be on for Blackburn Rovers, led here by David Batty. Shearer very closely marked indeed. Now Berg. Ten minutes to go to half time. Henningberg again. What a bad ball. Solve it. Crack, crack. Stat. And the throw goes to Rosenberg. it to the right fullback, Varme. All the Blackburn substitutes warming up at the moment. Varme's cross easily caught by Tim Shirt, by uh, Tim Flowers. Clearance goes straight into touch. Bobby Moon, Stuart Ripley, uh, Nicky Marker, Paul Warhurst, and Matty Holmes are the uh, Blackburn subs tonight. David Batty. And now Tim Sherwood. Berg gets it away. Batty. Shearer on that far side now. Jeff Kenner into Tim Sherwood. Newell getting it back, showed with a long raking drive, almost the first effort that uh, Blackburn have had on goal, and it's gone well, well wide. Yeah, it's about the first shot they've had, in fact, they've had nothing really creative at all, have they? 
The keeper's not had a shot to, to no, save Reza. No, not even a header. You know, there's been nothing at all. Simply because I think, Brian, it's OK having three in there. I'm all for that. But the ball has got to be played in. They've got to get a service. And uh, if it's getting played back the way all the time instead of forward, you know, what chance have they got? Matty once again. Caban challenging it. And in the end, the free kick goes against Blackburn Rovers. Against Chris Sutton. And Braxtat will take it. Hendra's head on. Solfet. He's played some lovely balls throughout midfield with Solfet. And here's Jakobsen. A little touch on there by uh, Scamelsrud. But here come Blackburn trying to put one or two passes together and succeeding in doing so there. A Shearer plays it wide now for Sherwood. Shearer back again. Sherwood. Alan Shearer. Touch on again for Shearer, but closing in on him. Sutton with the header there. Misguided. Comes back to Mike Newell. In for Sherwood, knocking it wide towards Shearer on the far side there. Just wouldn't fall though for Mikel. And Berg being chased by Jakobsen. The one or two little balls that went in the penalty area there. The Russian bird looked a little bit shaky there, but you know, some wild slashes at it and you know half hit balls out. I do think the game's certainly not all over, that's for sure. I do think if they get the ball. In their penalty area, I think, you know, there's, there's going to be chances for them. Neil now finding Batty. Hit long towards Sutton, who's offside. But what a ball it was anyway. Lurk and the goal scorer after 29. Well, they half it on the left. Derek Fazakli alongside him. He coach just brought in from Newcastle United great old Blackburn Rovers player of course of many years standing Jakobsen oh good work again well there's no doubt who's been the busier of the two goalkeepers Flowers quickly down to handle that one some good interplay again some good running into a good position again by Jakobsen I think at half time we'll have to be talking about how they're going to stop them attacking down this left hand side. Yes, Densos at number five. Yeah, he's been just getting a free reign, hasn't he, to come down and, and play Jakobsen in. Here's Mike Newell. He's got Shearer wide, he's got Sutton in the middle. Towards Sutton, couldn't quite reach it. That's going to be a Rusenberg throw as well. David Batty, the Rusenberg defender, seeking to steal a few yards. Newell. Shearer. Shearer. That's a terrific shot. Out of nothing there. Alan Shearer, they held off him for just a moment, and that was long enough. And that was something like 22, 23 yards range. Well done, Alan Shearer. It was terrific, wasn't it? I mean, he took the ball there, carried on, and great peg. See, the goalkeeper didn't look too safe there. Didn't look happy with that at all. No, it's a corner. Pierce up at the near post. Hendry looking to attack this one as well. Doesn't quite get to it. Newell into the side netting. If you're going to do anything there, you've just got to head it back across the six-yard box. That's all you need to do. Look, hit it across there and it could hit anybody and go in the net. I just hope Shearer gets a little bit more of the ball in the second half because, you know, he's the man. If anybody's the man who turned this game around, it's Alan Shearer. Great power in that. Risa with a kick. Last couple of minutes or so of the first half which has been one of a real struggle for Blackburn Rovers. A goal down, might have been more. One excellent save by uh, Tim Flowers. 
But a free kick now to the English champions. Jeff Kenner getting it forward. Farmer quite easily able to uh, manage that one. Sherwood holding off all comers now. Finding Mike Mule. A little touch now for Henning Bird. Down the line again, but no good for Shearer. I mean, Shearer looks disgusted at that. He's, he's telling Bird, what sort of ball is that to get him? Summing up the first half, uh, Saint. Well, I've been uh, very impressed with uh, the visit the home team. Well, here's Salter putting uh, Brackpack through. He's given a penalty. He's given a penalty against Ian Pierce for the challenge, and he's got a yet card as well as Pierce. He's absolutely dumbfounded by that. I must say that looked a very, very hard position to move. Well, I think the tackle was fine, but he pulled his jersey, Brian. Let's have a look at it here. I think the tackle was fine. There he goes in the tackle there. Plays the ball. And then he said, hang on a minute. Oh, hold on, back. hold on. That seems a very hard, very hard decision to make. Well, he did pull him back. Well, what it means is it's a major problem now for Blackburn Rovers. Jakobsen, who scored in the first game in this group from the penalty spot in Warsaw against Legia. Now could come in danger of putting this game beyond Blackburn's reach, unless Tim Flowers can do something here. Well, he doesn't have to, it's against the crossbar, and suddenly Blackburn can come on the counter-attack. Batty finding Sherwood, maybe justice was done. To Shearer. Well, that, that might be a little turning point in the game for, for Blackburn. They needed that little bit of luck. Sherwood again. Strong in the challenge. Sutton's in there as well. Sherwood, a little side foot actually. Pass back. Yeah, it's not nearly enough power to, uh, to beat Reza. As you say, that might just be the turning point. That might just stiffen them a little bit, Blackburn, and make them feel that maybe not everything's going to go against them tonight. But as it is, they're a go down scored by Lopin after 29 minutes. It's a real big struggle for the English champions against Rosenberg here in Trondheim tonight. 1 0 to Rosenberg is the half time situation. Importance of this? I think they realise the importance of it. I, yeah. think they, I think you'd be saying, look, Let's press the game a little bit further. Let's get more tackles in, but let's look forward earlier. But you've got to, you've got to try and get, take the ball further upfield before you put crosses in. They haven't had a decent cross into the box, I don't think. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Ron. Here we go. Back to Trondheim. Back to Norway. Blackburn are one nil down. Back to Ian St John and Brian Moore. Thank you, Bob. Well, they might get the odd cross in now because Stuart Ripley is on in place of Lee McKell. Ripley on as a substitute then for Blackburn Rovers. me as a player who's not in the highest of confident form at the moment but he's really what Blackburn needs somebody who can fly down that flank and take on a man that's what he's really got to do and then get the crosses in for the likes of Shearer Sutton and Mule see well that's the sort of thing he was doing uh, six months ago but uh, he's got to do it tonight certainly I think the young boy, uh, Mikel, was finding it a bit difficult in the middle of the field there against an experienced side like this, and quality team. So I think that was the right choice to take them off and, uh, and put Ripley on. But Ripley's got to do the business. Here comes Rosenberg, remember, in the white shirts, looking the goal scorer, number nine. This is number six, Strand, strong midfield player. Nicked away there by David Batty. Finding Henry and to Jeff Kenner. Vincent Lee, it's Rosenberg challenging again. Putting the ball through the back. And now 
for Jakobsen. No! by Hendry on that occasion. And a fantastic volley! And a wonderful save there. Solvic shot. Superbly saved again by Tim Flowers. And that one too, which was a good deal easier. But Solvic, who's looked an outstanding midfield player, I think, for Rusenberg tonight, caught that superbly on the volley. That was another excellent piece of uh, keeping by Tim Flowers. And an excellent piece of play by uh, Rosenberg, wasn't it? Excellent. And here they come again. Rami, fullback. Looking. Playing in again. There's some space here. Being charged off Hendry. Shot by Strand. Indeed, in the opening minutes of the second half, once again, a fantastic piece of goalkeeping there by Flowers. But the Norwegian champions are now making all the running again. It's a lovely straight to Norway. It's a wonderful strike, of course. Jakobsen with the corner. Hopkins up there from the back. Get up! Get up! And defending will have to be done here. And some shoving, I fancy, by Bragstad, giving Blackburn Rovers the uh, free kick. But you know, the, the move that led up to the strike on goal was again just a nameless kick out of defence by Blackburn Rovers. They just kicked the ball up to straight to the opposition, bang, 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 and it was almost another in the net. You know, they've got to be far more careful with the, the ball getting played up. Just had it confirmed by the Blackburn Rovers bench, so that's exactly what they want. Stuart Ripley on the ball here to be doing. Play wide, get some pace down the flank, and feed the three men in uh, the middle who are just looking for that vital goal for Blackburn Rovers. Here's Ripley again. On a free kick. Well, nice to, to see him attempting to get up the flank, wasn't it? And I think he's got to do that, but he's playing against a classy fullback here. The number five is a very, very good player. Just get the impression his confidence is not all that it has been in the past, you know, and he just needs one or two good runs past the defender to do something really well to bring it all back. It's Berg with the free kick. Just foul and another free kick this time for Rosenberg. National for England, if memory serves me, was right at the end of Graham Taylor's reign. Goes Batty, goes Newell, it's again to Batty, played gently for Newell. Looking to get Ripley, but Ripley had started his run and the ball was played straight and uh, to Stenshaus. He got such pace again. And on this occasion didn't match it. That is challenge beaten by Solvit, but Blackburn can get it back again. David Batty, Shearer, playing it wide again. It's Neil on the far side. Sutton coming for this one, but I don't think he'll get there. And it's a goal. But you know, had he got that ball there, had it been a better ball and they got it. Jeff Kenner standing on the half wheeling. Now really, as the ball was getting played up the right-hand side of the field, Jeff Kenner's got to get down there the, the way that the, the Rosenberg fullbacks are doing, get down there and support them. Because they had two against one in the centre circle, there's no need for them back there. Andrews header picked up here by the right fullback, Kvarna. Sherwood. This is Strand, number six. Sherwood again to Shearer. Mule. And now Ripley. Patty. Berg's gone away down the right flank. Patty turning this way though. Gets it back again. Everything seems to go through David Batty in that midfield area. It's Henningberg. Now it's Sherwood. Time. There are plenty of white shirts that are back now. Ripley, can he get past his man this time? He's hit it past him, got his head down. But the Norwegians had it all well covered. And here's little Jakobsen. Back, back, waiting in the middle. 
Falcons in there too. Scammell's Roots, Jakobsen. Playing it wide this time to Lurken, the goal scorer. And then hits it straight at Henry. Strand doing well. Bought himself a good yard there. Lurken. Solvets. Playing it wide again. No foul. And Ripley going from deep this time. Desperate to try and get past uh, the fullback. And a throw given Blackburn's way. here again oh my goodness that was an important clearance by Pierce rather it was Kenner I think in fact who uh, made that clearance in the end and here's Kenner again on this side can Batty get there first Jacobson playing it in again to Locken Jacobson long range shot well saved and in the end, it's Henry who gets in and knocks it away. Just as Lawton was coming in there for the little tap-in. Well done again, Flores. That was another good save. You know, dangerous ball that right coming off the floor like that. And these conditions can out, you know, the pitch is wet. Henry's clearance. Once again, no doubting which of the goalkeepers is the busier. Lurken. Brad Pack after this one. Here's Ripley. To Shearer. Got Sutton ahead of him. Mules coming up fast. Ripley's gone steaming down the right bank. Shearer finding Batty. before it gets through to Newell. And sold it again, who had that terrific volley just after half-time. Scammelswood, the captain. To Jakobsen on the far side, but a throw to Blackburn. That was a careless ball from him, but the difference between the two teams in, in the passing line is that uh, Rosenberg looked to play the ball forward. Little penetrating passes. And if they play one forward, they look for a second one forward. You know, where Blackburn really and Knight really haven't been playing anything at all. There's the shot coming in. And again, just dipped in front of Flowers here. Did really well, actually, getting his body behind that. And well done, Henry following in. Rosenberg's free kick. Back back, getting in across the face of the goal there. Suddenly, uh, Berg was in a little bit of trouble racing and uh, facing his own goal, but they get it away, only as far as Kvarma here. Strand. And behind for the goal kick. The ball dipping and swerving there a little bit. Always just going beyond the crossbar. <laughs> These strong midfield players, Strand. He set his intentions well, ladies. I'm going past you here, and he did. <laughs> so the second half gone, still 1 0 to Rosenberg. The goal by Lurken after 29 minutes. And it was a, a good effort, and Sherwood had made a good run for him, but it didn't quite come off for Blackburn, and now they need to defend. Look at 
Gets the ball in, Pierce gets nicely behind it. Back again for Lurken, though. Solvet. Kenner with the clearance. Back starts. Hoffman. Stem Sauce. Now look at Jakobsen. Good play by Jakobsen. In the end, he hadn't got the cross. But that excellent play deserved, and it's Batty who can bring it away now for Blackburn Rovers. Envy. To Berg. Ball played poorly there by Alan Shearer. This is Strand. As Bruschenberg come on the attack again. Pierce holding them up. Supported here by David Batty. The flag up for an offside against Chris Sutton. Not much in it. Blackburn just don't seem capable of putting a good attacking uh, move together at the moment, so. No, they don't. Uh, I mean, the, the passing actually from, from back to front has been abysmal. I know Big Ron was saying that uh, they were playing too many straight balls. I don't mind that as long as they, they hit a red jersey with it, but I mean, they, they hit white jerseys. And there's another one. Solfet. Ooh, Strand. Driven well against the post. Well, they've hit the post there. They've hit the crossbar with the corner, and they've scored once. Of Rosenberg. And Blackburn at the moment lucky to be only just a single goal down. And here's Ripley. Sherwood. Now for Batty, played for Shearer. Oh. I mean, the, the shot that hit the post again wasn't a lovely setup. The setup was beautiful, played in, the shot hit the post. As you say, they're leading a chant life in a way, Blackburn, because they should really be about three down. Batty to Ripley. Not going to cause any damage right back there. Here he comes. Let it go. It's easily cut out again. On this side, remember, we've already lost 3-1 to Legia Warsaw in Warsaw, which is where Blackburn Rovers next go. This was the shot by Strand that beat the uh, dive of flowers but not the uh, post Pierce getting it away Brad Pack when he came through to Lockin it's uh, Mike Newell who gets it away two Blackburn players going for that one Solfett Campbell through it, and now Rama. Lurken. Bragstad. Just can't get anything going at the moment, back then. They're getting a bit of a chasing, aren't they? But they have to weather this little storm, Brian. I mean, it's still only 1-0, and if, if they can hold it for another 10 minutes or so, you know, this the fire will dampen down a little bit, and uh, and who knows? I mean, they've, they've had a few let-offs tonight, so it may well be they could get something out again. Can I hitting it forward to Sutton? Certainly nothing there. Jakobsen. Ripley getting back to repair the damage. Gets it back to Tim Flowers. Batty to Ripley. Sutton up there, Shearer and Newell all in there now. If Ripley can just find the cross. But he can't. 
Burke trying to keep it going. Can Batty get a cross in? No, he can't either. And away come the Norwegians again. It's been that sort of night for Blackburn Rovers. Pierce trying to keep them going, but back back. And there's a foul on the Blackburn central defender, Ian Pierce. By Solbev, who's still down. And the referee deciding that the uh, number seven has to be looked at. Well, the referee's given one or two strange decisions tonight, and I think that was another one there. I think we all thought that the Pierce had actually fouled uh, the number seven there, don't you think so, Brian? Yes, indeed. Solve it. Yeah, solve it, yeah. Let's have a look at it here. Pierce is, is going in. He's... Well, he wins, he wins the tackle, Pierce, which, fair enough, and then just fell right on top of him. But overall, they just don't seem to get into this game, Blackburn, do they? No. Um, you know, as I say, maybe if, if uh, Rosenberg sort of take the foot off the pedal for 10 minutes or so, they might get themselves back in it again. But uh, Ripley, who's on the ball now, hasn't done anything since he's come on, so he's really got to get a good cross on this time. Well, he's won a free kick instead. Pierce is coming forward for this. Henry's. Tall Colin Henry's in there too. They've got enough big players, haven't they? Uh, when you look at Blackburn Rovers, they've got Newell and Sutton and Pierce, Henry. They're all six footers. Yeah, a quality ball, and surely one of them might get ahead of it. Well, here comes that free kick. Floating high. Shearer knocks it down, and it's been knocked in. Mike Newell. And it's Mike Newell, the number 10 who's brought Blackburn Rovers level when we just couldn't see a goal coming in any direction and if Tim Sherwood's long cross in there Shearer I think who wins the ball there yes and wins it well and in the end it's uh, Mike Newell who just pokes it home to make it 1-1 one -one. well there you are a ball into the box simple ball everybody in pile in and there was Mike getting the final touch on all very simple isn't it why, why have we not been doing that for the better part of the game? But it was a, it was a sort of, I would say, an English type goal line. You know, and we, to be fair, goes off corner sure. kicks and, and to be fair, totally against the run of play. Oh, yeah. Now there's a break on as well. This time uh, Sherwood's run was well timed, but the ball was playing, uh, was played too hard ahead of him. It's Mike Newell, the goal scorer. I was saying, Brian, about riding your luck, you know, and, and it may well be the case there that, uh, you know, the ball's hitting the bar in the post, and the uh, black ones, when it was 1-0, they were still very much in the game, and now it's 1-1, and they're looking now, surely, to try and get a winner here. Klama, still plenty of uh, strong defending need to be done, though, because this is a good Norwegian side, as we've seen. Sherwood knocking the ball forward towards Shearer. But back once again to the goalkeeper, Riza. Hit first time by him. Often. Good jump by Henry. And Henry claims he went for it, but the foul's been given. Well, a uh, hand was really attacked that one, didn't he? He may have caught Strand there with, the, with his arm, but his I don't arm think it was an elbow in it. No. I think it was just a straightforward uh, centre-half going challenging for the ball with a bit of strength. Here's the goal again. Shearer did That's well, did job, Oh, Shearer did well. Source hitting it high towards the Blackburn Rovers goal. Henry missed out on that one. Locker now looking uh, to get another chance. It's important that Blackburn give nothing away here. Get the ball forward again. Newell tried to make something of it. Batty trying to make something of it. Mike Newell in the end pouncing on it and gets it back to Tim Flowers. 
Farmer with the header. Sutton. Look at Oh, it went through Henry's legs, but he uh, recovered very quickly indeed. Kenner getting the ball forward again. But uh, Sherwood losing out this time. And now a free kick. For the foul on Strand. The 25 minutes of the game left. Rosenborg one, Blackburn Rovers one. Camelford, the captain of the home side with this free kick. Floated in, it was Pierce who got up there, Flowers who got up there with his fist. And in the end, it was Hofton, the defender, getting it well over the crossbar for the goal kick. I thought that was a little bit of a flapper there from Tim Flowers. If you, if you come punching there, coming through the rocker players, you've got to get some distance on it. You see Brian coming in. The challenge here. I think that was Sheeran again that goes head to that one. Tim came out, didn't really get anything on it at all. But here he comes with the goal kick now. Well, Henry said play it back. Pierce didn't hear him and was a little slow to uh, attempt to do so, but here's Ian Pierce on the ball now, hitting it long and sheer given offside. There couldn't have been much in that. Keep your shot. Hit him, you think. Bragstad with the free kick. Batty beaten in the air, but very rarely on the ground, although he is there. Ball bounced off uh, Ian Pierce. They've got it back now to Kenner. And now Ripley, it's gone out of play. Jakobson. Stopped by the challenge of Batty. Get the ball forward again. Towards Alan Shearer. Here's Shearer. Sutton chasing. But they get the ball back again to goalkeeper Reza. Foul by Henning Berg. On Jakobsen. All Norwegian international teammates. Henry with a powerful header away. Batty up to Shearer. Can Blackburn somewhere find a winning goal now? Shearer with Ripley going, storming down the right-hand side again, but they've provided with Batty instead. Now inside for Sherwood. Sutton being forced back. Finds Jeff Kenner. Played in for Mike Newell. Nicked on this time by Sutton. And Shearer, here's Newell again. He's knocked it wide this time for Ripley. And Sherwood's in there. It's a terrific save by the keeper. I thought that ball, in fact, looked as though he was going to cross the line. But he's got some more work to do here. This time it was Sutton flying at the ball there. But it went wide. It was a terrific header there by Shearer in the first place. What a good ball in, but wasn't it? A terrific ball. And that almost looked as if it would hit the post, even as if it come onto the post from this angle. Great ball in by Ripley. Great attacking header. And so unlucky not to get another one there. Hendry coming about 30 yards for that one. That was positive. You know, that since they got the goal now, Blackman Rovers are beginning to believe that they can actually win this game. They've been chasing their tail for most of it, but... Uh, I do think they can get back in it, Brian, and uh, get himself a goal. Well, they've given it away badly here of uh, Rosenberg. Ripley looking to get round the defender, Hoftung. And succeeds in doing so this time. Gets the ball in. That'll do him a power of good. Strand gets it away for Rosenberg. How can I? 
hit to Shearer. Taken beautifully there by Shearer. Wasn't an easy ball for him to take either. Not it down, and Batty was flying in there. Oh, that looked a half a chance, didn't it? Did. More than half a chance. What a good ball back there by Sutton. Suddenly Blackburn had begun to spark. The errors are coming now from Rusenberg, and maybe it's not all up with the English champions. As Berg takes it on, and may have taken years, yeah, showed just too much of that to Hofton. But a Blackburn throw. Henningberg with it. Sherwood. Yes, long range shot. That's down the high street. Goes into Trondheim High Street <laughs> and uh, it's a goal kick. Yeah. Looks as though they're about to bring on young uh, Stefan Iverson. Iverson, in place of Lotten, who in fact had passed the fitness test only today, so obviously his injury is playing up a little bit. But here's the 18 year old Stefan Iverson, who's a striker. And they say in these parts, he comes on so often, this youngster, as a sub, and most times when he comes on, he believes he's going to score, and most times he does. Is that the bad news, Brian? That's the bad news. Shearer. But it's been a much better five or ten minutes for Blackburn, hasn't it? Oh, Ripley. Totally different. If he gets another ball in, who knows? No, the free kick's going against him. It's not happy with it. Strand. And now here's Everson, the 18-year-old. This time it's a Blackburn ball. Sherwood. Something's up ahead of him, being fed by Newell in the first place. Finds Shearer. Knocks it out wide for Ripley. Goal kick. Now that's the first time really in the game that Blackburn Rovers have played it forward back and then forward again. To play a running player, people running forward into space. And it was, a, it was just the ball was just over hit by a little bit. But at least they're beginning to gel a little bit now. They're beginning to play a bit of football. And the, earlier on, they had the ball up when they almost scored again. The ball up to uh, Alan Shearer. Not a great ball, but Shearer's such a good player. He was able to bring it down in his chest and do something with it. Strand for Rosenberg. Ball just squirts away there for Sherwood. Finds Newell with it. He's working like a fever, big Newell in midfield now, isn't he? You know, since he's played there in the second half, he's a big strong lad, grafting away. Not everything coming off for him, but he, uh, he's putting the effort in. I think also we've seen the midfield players looking to get forward themselves a little more now. Batty was flying in on a header just now, wasn't he? And, and Sherwood was the furthest forward just after that. Well, that's right, as I'm saying, Brian, because, because they're playing and hitting the front people with the ball, which you've got to do. I mean, there's no point in, in people making runs from the back if they're just hitting it to a white jersey. In the meantime, more defending to be done by Blackburn Rovers. One point is better than none. Three would be wonderful. Strand plays it in. Hendry meets it well. Strand with the throw for Rosenberg. Here's Everson. Oh, what a good bit of play there by the 18-year-old. A little stab with the outside of the boot. And that could so easily have caused all sorts of trouble just inside the Blackburn Rovers six-yard area. He caught them by surprise there, didn't he? Because he played it with the with wrong foot, as it were. He's flicked it in with his left ear, and, and Tim Flowers had to be lively. Shearer missed that one, but gathers this. Holds off all and sundry. Gets his shot in, but it's charged down. Batty picks up the rebound. Finds Ripley again on the far side. Looking to go past his man. Gets his cross in this time. Hofton gets it away. 
Batty once again though for Blackburn. Back to Berg. And now for Ripley. Berg again. Little chip in this time towards Shearer, but didn't reach him. Jakobsen on the chase, but he'll be outpaced there by Henningberg. Back to Tim Flowers. Sutton chasing, getting in behind them. Newell's up in support as well. Shearer's in there too. If Ripley can just get across him, he's played it short to Batty instead. Now there might be trouble at the other end because they are so devastating on the break. And there's the break coming up. Can Hendry get there first? He can. That was a great bit of defending by Colin Hendry. And Tim Flowers on his way out again there. Yeah. I think, you know, had he got to it first, the Rosenberg player got to it first, you know, he was in no man's land. As it was, it was a super bit of defending by the big Scott. Excellent. Here's Newell now for Blackburn. Batty. All oh, given away. Played in now for Blackpack. Again, Henry's there. This time it's Kenner there, just holding up Everson. Comfortably onto the left foot, finds Shearer. Shearer surrounded by three. It came off the Norwegian, so it'll be a throw to Blackburn. With about 13 minutes of the game left. Hendry. Blackburn's throw. The victory would be terrific for them. But you wonder if they shouldn't be satisfied with a draw. It could have been so much worse than that. I think that they would take the draw, Brian, but I also think they can still win this game. Berg playing it in, but the pass was signalled and it was easily cut out by the Norwegians who've now got to Jakobsen streaming down that left-hand side. Scamersall, and now Everson. And the captain's shot goes wide of Flowers' goal. Ben Scamerswood. Certainly the warnings there again for Blackburn. These people are devastating on the, uh, on on the, the break. Oh, well, on the break, I mean, they just flooded forward there, all the white jerseys. But they do it with such pace as well. The passing, Brian, when they come out of defence, the passing is excellent. And that's what sets up chances. Kenna. Shearer. Hendry. Scammell's route being hustled by Mike Newell. As you say, he's done so much work for Blackburn tonight. Hofstad knocking it forward. Strand beaten by Batty. Kenner gets it back to Flowers. Shearer jumping for this one and winning it well. Blackburn's throw. There's not many balls got away from Shearer, whether they're in the air or his chest or his feet. You know, he's a terrific target man. They, they can, if they aim it in his direction, reasonably close to him, he'll do something with it. Jeff Kenner. Up to Shearer. Mike Kenner, the man bought from Southampton. Kenner hitting it forward again. Sutton to Shearer. Newell's wanting it. Bat is wanting it. Sherwood's made a little run. Ripley's in space on the far side, but it's maybe not the best ball that was played, bringing uh, Henning Berg into it. But now Berg has done well to find Ripley behind the defence. Brings it onto the left foot. Bangs in a goodish cross there, but it's a little too high for Shearer. And it's a goal kick. The Blackburn fans looking at the time left in this game and looking at the scoreline, <laughs> we think things are looking pretty good for them. Because they've really you know, had a pacing tonight as far as football is concerned, but they're, they're hanging in there. 
We're looking for to get the winner. Here's Shearer. Sutton on the far side. That'll be a corner, will it? No. Risa. Very experienced goalkeeper. 25 caps. He's 34 now. Coached in an earlier part of his career by an Englishman, actually, Brian King, who's been over here for quite a few years, a former Millwall goalkeeper. Sherwood. Kenner getting it up to Newell. Back again to Kenner. Newell. Pierce again looking to play it wide for Ripley. Knocked inside again. Out it goes again. This time for Berg, who's out there. Headed inside to Ripley. And it's gone back. That has gone forward. Plenty of white shirts are back. And now there'll be plenty of white shorts streaming forward. You can be sure of that. This is young uh, Stefan uh, Everson on the ball. Blackburn working well, getting back quickly, organising themselves and finding Batty on the far side. Shearer well offside. Rosenberg making another substitution, bringing on uh, Storbeck, a midfield player. And taking a strand off for a midfielder for a midfielder. Henry gets it away. Number four out. Black stats. It's in first time. Henry didn't get on to the end of that one. Berg might make the clearance here, though. Finding Ripley. Blackburn about to make a substitution, bringing Paul Warhurst on by the look of it. Oh, possibilities here for Blackburn. Well across Henry there, wasn't it? Colin Henry read that one there, got the interception. Stombrick. And a goal kick. So Paul Warhurst coming on. Certainly one of the game's unluckiest players. It's Tim Sherwood who's coming off. So it would seem, yes. So he's got a bit of a knock, actually, Sherwood. But Warhurst, such a versatile player, plays up front, plays at the back, and as I say, one of the unluckiest of players, broken his legs twice. That's one leg each in the last 12 months. Hasn't played in the first team for something like six months now. He's going to the left side of midfield. Not by any means match hardened after his long layoff, but who knows, he might just pull something out for Blackburn Rovers in five minutes or so to the left. They've also withdrawn Sutton into midfield as well, centre of midfield. So the, the pack in the middle there and uh, leaving Newell up there with Shearer. In the meantime, it's a free kick to Rosenberg. Towards Everson, but he's well beaten in the air. By Colin Hendry, Henningberg gets it back comfortably and safely to Tim Flowers. High towards Newell. Will it fall for Shearer? It won't. It's banged away by Kavana. Everson through the middle. Little Jakobsen's in there as well. And Bird does well to keep it out. Everson on the far side, though. 
Brad Pack is there. This could be real trouble for Blackburn here. Oh, an astonishing goal. An astonishing goal there by Stensos. Just when it looked as though Blackburn might be at least going away with a draw. A rifling drive there by the defender. I was played back again and played up beautifully for him. Yeah, it was laid up beautifully, as you say there, Brian. Rolled back from the byline. Look at that. I mean, Pierce could, you know, sold himself. Ball rolled back. And really fucked him. You have to feel now for Blackburn, you know, they've, they've done the hard but they clawed themselves back into the game. And then to lose a goal at this stage, I mean, that's a real body blow. Kenner with the ball now for Blackburn, not forward. Banged away by Kwana. Hit long by Flowers. Can Blackburn yet save themselves? Shearer battling for it, but again, the white shirts are all around him and they get it away. Batty trying to get it out to Ripley. Batty getting in there again. Knocked away that time by Braxstadt. Warhurst planting the ball forward now to Newell. Shearer's in a good position as well. Ripley on the far side. But the time fast running out now for Blackburn. Ripley into Batty. Birds on the far side. And Blackburn yet find a goal that saves themselves. Ripley going beyond them. The little chip in there. They get a corner. Great little run and a bad ball at the end of it there. Brian, he really has to find a Blackburn player with that cross. He'd done the hard bit, got past the defenders. But, you know, corner kick, dangerous. Hits it long and high. And it'll be a throw to Blackburn. A few more seconds taken up. Just a little over two minutes left on the clock now. Everson here playing the ball in. What a lovely ball he played back actually for uh, Stensors. Free kick to uh, Rosenberg. Beginning to look very much like two play, two defeats for Blackburn Rovers in the Champions League. <laughs> Dramatically, of course, it means that their quarter-final hopes haven't entirely been extinguished, but they've got to be some pretty dramatic turnarounds in the matches that are still to come. Home and away against the Legia of Warsaw. Home, of course, against the Norwegians on the way to uh, Moscow Sparta. Here's Ripley. Two were on him, and two got the better of him. Berg trying to keep it going, though. Batty, knocked back for Pierce. Played by him to Warhurst. Knocked in again towards Newell. But again, the white shirts get it away without a great deal of discomfort. Streaming out again, Jakobsen's made a good break. Everson's in there too. Jakobsen's waiting just across the face of the Blackburn Rovers goal, and it's a goal kick. A precision pass setting up again, Ryman. You know, that's been a hallmark of this Rosenberg team. The passing has been terrific, and the little penetrating passes they've been looking for. When midfield players break out, they look to play it, they look to play it past you know the defenders that was a lovely little ball there and he just turned left Colin Henry Pierce comes across but he's getting shot and a lot of pace in it direction wasn't there last few seconds now Hagen has come on so throw the Blackburn on the far side Batty knocking it back for Berg. One last attempt, Pierce has gone right forward, so too has Hendry. Blackburn's throw, playing time added on. Won't be much of it. Warhurst knows it's got to be taken quickly. Batty will try and bang that ball into the box. 
but he's lost possession and he said it's banged away by the uh, Rosenberg defence up to Everson got players over on that far side now Jakobsen in the end no damage done as Hendry steps in but the clearance was a poor one there by Flowers well that would almost have been the final word Sterling through again a comedy of errors in that Blackburn defence that's a shot on target that he really shouldn't have had there goes the final whistle and Rosenberg have won by two goals to one it's a desperate night again for Blackburn Rovers in Europe. Having already beaten by, been beaten by Moscow Spartak, and now they've lost to the champions of Norway by 2-1 with that goal four minutes from the end by Stensors. It could have been more, but they looked for so long as though they pulled themselves round. in front of Bernhard Langer quite simply it's this to win too hard through the break in that stone dead and it's off to the tenth for the boys which is just across the other side of the lake in a difficult par four, 418 yards. But before that, of course, Bernard has to tap that in. There's no easy putt at this stage of the proceedings. which is just across the corner there. It's perhaps the nearest tee to this. A par four and a very good one. And that might sort them out. Probably a tougher par four than the 18th is today. And a little fade round the corner into the middle of the green. Middle of the fairway rather. down the left and may just topple out of short grass it shouldn't be too much of a problem started it at the pin but wind against him from the right and well finds the middle right hand of the green this is Langer's 13th playoff 1-6 lost 5 and 1 NR now Tim what's the difference with let Barry Lane shot just eight yards closer 168 yards to go and Barry again going with the six iron can only see half of the flag from his perspective there's a large mound about 80 yards short of the green so unable to see much of the putting surface and just the top half of the flag visible Langer now and in lane in contrast two playoffs and lost both of them so on past experience one would say that Langer is favorite and certainly after those two shots must be considered so now it's not such a difficult shot that though because it's downhill to the hole and lane can flop it out around the ball of Langer and live the land will take it all the way down to the whole side <laughs> 
visited two greenside bunkers today already and failed to get down in two either time. So he's due one. As you said, he's going to use the contours. Take this one down. Magnificent stroke from Lane. He threw it an awful lot further than I thought he would. And it's a six-footer. And Langer now has a putt to win. I wonder what sort of putting grip Burner's going to use this time. But the crossover, is it going to work like it did on the 18th? it goes car the speed from the top of the hill has just won the Smurfit European Open and he's won it with some style there's no question about that tremendous performance he eagled the last to get into a playoff and now asking the spectators to get off the green and quite rightly so but you have to feel terribly sorry for Barry Lane he never put a foot wrong in the last 36 holes and probably only one man could have done what Langer did and it was he himself terrific finish Thank you very much. Bernard, a fourth win in Ireland, three Irish Opens and now a European Open. Is it something in the water here or what? Well, there must be something about Ireland. I've, I've surely enjoyed coming back here every year and uh, I've actually had the very first tournament I ever led uh, on the European Tour, I think I was about 19, uh, was the Irish Open. So I have very fond memories of, of Ireland. Your putter, quite simply, is on fire. The eagle at the 18th put up a roar that could be heard all the way over in Dublin. Yeah, that was wonderful. I've been actually struggling with my putter uh, the whole week, except yesterday I made about four in a row at one stage, but that was it. It got cold again and missed a few shorter ones. But uh, these last two, the one for eagle and this one for birdie, they were pretty special. Every Sunday there's a party around you. You're making a habit of this, huh? I don't mind. That's a wonderful feeling. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the European Open couldn't have a better gentleman as a champion. Congratulations, Bernard. Thanks very much. The Alfred Dunhill Cup is next for us, and it comes from the home of golf, the old course at St Andrews, and an exclusively live coverage starts on Thursday, the 19th of October. The last stroke of the 1995 European Open was a spectacular one. It came from Bernhard Langer. What a month we've had on Sky Sports. Torrens wins at Collingtree. We bring home the Ryder Cup. Langer's success here in Ireland. We will be successful at the home of golf. The 19th of October is a date for your diary. The first day of the Alfred Dunhill Cup.
London tour of South Africa. This November on Sky Sports. When call charges are rounded up to the nearest minute, you end up paying for time you don't use. We believe that's a cost you shouldn't have to carry. Which is why orange charge by the second. The future's bright. The future's orange. Call 0800 286 286. You know Daz is good value, but did you know just how good? Especially when compared to some other leading brands. We asked people what they thought. I don't think there's a lot of difference between them all. Not a lot in it, really. Not much difference in price at all. So what's the actual difference? It could be as much as this. A loaf of bread! <laughs> I can't believe it. It's really 30 pence cheaper. Yeah, I never thought it'd be that much. You work that out over a year, it's quite a heck of a saving. Check Dazzy yourself against other leading brands. For whiteness and value, use your loaf. When I get indigestion... Red peas really do help. The flavours are good. They're very fruity. Tangy. Tingy on the tongue. It's tangy. It's fast. It's Renny Rupees. There's a nutritious breakfast food. A food that can help you resist the kind of snacking that could ruin your diet. Food that is low in fat and high in fiber, so it fills you up. One life, one food, one great fiber provider. Kellogg's All Brand. Before Batman. It's calling you, isn't it? Before Judge Dredd. We're both his children. There was the dark hero. Trust me. I know you got claws, you ain't sure. Oh my god! Guyver. The hunter comes to the hunter. Oh, yes. It's becoming interesting. He is the law. The killers let the man go. And so are you. The judge. Find out who he is. We're all terrible. And the executioner. You threaten mankind. I protect the Guyver the Dark Hero premieres Thursday at 8 on Sky Movies. This is Sky Sports. Part of the Sky Satellite Network. Sky Sports, with Ford Escort, takes you to the heart of the action. Hello and welcome to Goals on Sunday. Coming up on the programme with some great action for you. We'll have all Saturday's goals and extended highlights of our two Super Sunday games. Everton against Newcastle in a moment, but we start with the return of you-know-who for Manchester United against Liverpool. Commentary comes from Martin Tyler and Andy Gray. Well, all football lovers will be pleased to see him back. Few can match his magnetism. Controlling the ball, not a problem. Controlling himself, well, it's vital now. Controlling the game is David Ellery, a high-profile referee appointed by the Premier League. No one wants or expects special favours for the Frenchman. Just a fair deal, like every player on the pitch. Well, Andy Cole and Eric Cantona are back in tandem. One full game here against Blackburn in January when Cantona got his last goal for United. And of course the roof fell in at Crystal Palace. Just looking quickly at Manchester United's midfield area. The quartet, it looks as though Nicky Butt's going to play furthest right of the four. Lee Sharp in the centre with Roy Keane. Left to centre, Keane right to centre. Philip Neville. Ryan Giggs very much on the left to start with. Well, no one's been talking about a European exit at Manchester United today. It's perhaps the perfect way for Alex Ferguson to get his players back on track. But there's a big job to be done here. United have won only one of their last five games over the same stretch, four wins and a draw for Liverpool 
They've had to make the uh, alterations today for a whole variety of reasons. Cole found by Butt. Here's Kibble afternoon. And sure enough, he's got to be involved right at the heart of it. Liverpool contribute. They lost possession of the ball easily in midfield. But he finds space. Look at Cantona. Whether he didn't quite get the control, but the way it sat up for him was important because it lifts into the space. And his second touch is absolutely perfect. What a start for the home side. It's taken a little over a minute for a major, major impact for Manchester United in this match for Eric Cantona and his comeback. from long range and Liverpool certainly have been encouraging him to shoot from distance and Schmeichel wasn't sure exactly where that was going to end up well, I'll always say when someone hits from distance you can always tell how the goalkeeper's worried by the way he either stands and casually watches it go wide or whether he does this and he's scrambling across his goal he's worried about this Peter Schmeichel really worried it's only just gone wide Rush coming in. Well, that oh. deserved the goal. That deserved the goal. That was beautiful football from Liverpool. A great play from Fowler, who gets released. Skin Steve Bruce. Now watch the way he looks up. Rushes Steven in. The goalkeeper doesn't get on it. Hits him in the shin. It goes wide. Really fancied Ian Rush here. It's a beautiful ball in from his strike partner. Just weighted in so perfectly. No great pace on it. Ian Rush will be disappointed. Well, it's not a big surprise. Liverpool having more of the ball. Key. Giggs. Cole. Sharp. Making sure that Ruddock had to play it. Otherwise, Liverpool were in danger of going two adrift. McManaman. But slipped. Oh, and it's bounced off Bruce Fowler. Goes down. Liverpool turn to David Ellery. No penalty in the mind of the referee. And no visiting fans here to make their point on behalf of the players. Well, that looked a really clumsy tackle from here from Steve Bruce. I don't think Robbie Fowler's going over here without any contact. You're a striker and you're ahead of the, the centre-back. The last thing you're going to do with the ball at your feet is go over. There's no contact. It's certainly one that we can have a look at. But Fowler was absolutely furious. Chased after David Ellery. Redner. Here's Fowler again. Ball played undeniably that time by Pallister. Cantona trying to link up down the United left. Fowler, McManaman. Liverpool pulling the strings at the moment. Fowler not dwelling on the disappointment but a definite disappointment it was for Liverpool they believe they should have had a penalty well look at this will give us a better idea the ball's played in and Steve Bruce doesn't deal with it Fowler's through well that's a clumsy tackle if nothing else there's a lot of arms and legs David Ellery in all fairness to him had a good position to see it Manchester United at the moment. It's 
Steve Bruce very relieved because it was a lapse in control that could have been very costly. Partners. It hits Bruce. Thomas. No one left side this side. Now Liverpool are absolutely dominating possession in this game at the moment. They're controlling the pace and tempo of the game. Manchester United just back on the edge of the box. I know Brian Kidd's on at the edge of the, the pitch there. He's telling his players, trying to get them to go and put pressure on, get some tackles in. He seems to be indicating to me. Because the way Liverpool are just stroking the ball about at the moment, well, it must be giving them some cause for concern. And that's a bad decision. Didn't look a good decision at all, 